Hello guys, Dr. Hasbullah here and in this video, we're gonna move on into the new chapter which is called Turbo Machinery. And in this chapter, you're gonna learn a few things. First is the definition of Turbo Machinery and then we're gonna go into Turbo Pumps and how to analyze it and also we're gonna do turbines, right? So let's get to it. So what is Turbo Machinery? A turbo machinery is basically a rotating machine that either supply or extract energy from the fluid. Okay, let me put it this way. So basically you have fluid here and also you have what we call a rotor, right? Because the turbo machinery is a rotating device, so inside it there is an impeller or rotor. So turbo machinery either supply or extract energy from the fluid. Okay, and the device that is supplying energy to the fluid, we call it pumps or compressors. And the device that extract energy from the fluid is usually we call it turbines. Okay. Of course, there are a lot of turbines, there are a lot of pumps and a lot of compressor, but we're gonna go through it one by one. Now, let's take a look at pumps, okay? So a pump basically has two components, two major components. One is called the casing, and the other one is called the impeller. And a pump looks something like this. It's got the impeller in the middle, and this is enclosed by a casing. Okay, and that is what a casing looks like. And the flow of water is moving this direction and it goes out to the exit of the casing, right? And this is the front view of the pumps. Now, if I draw the side view, it's gonna look something like this. And this is your impeller. And this will be the inlet of your casing. Right, and this will be your outlet of the casing. Right, so the flow will come in from this side. It's going into the eye of the pump, okay? It's going into here. The impeller is rotating because we supply it with electricity, right? Remember that pump is the device that is supplying energy to the fluid, right? So we supply the pump with electrical energy and then that energy will be converted to the fluid through the impeller, right? So flow comes in from here, from left to right, okay? And it goes around, let me, write this in red okay so flow goes from left to right here right into the eye of the impeller right and then the impeller rotates and brings along the fluid okay to this direction and it goes out through the casing outlet right if i label it here so this is called casing and this is called impeller Okay, also this one is also impeller. The center of the impeller is called the eye and this is the outlet. And of course, there's a shaft here that is supplying all the energy to the impeller, right? And this shaft could be connected to a turbine, for example, or it could be connected to the electric motor. Now that you know what a pump looks like, of course now you need to know how to analyze the pump. For example, later when you went into the industry and you work as an engineer and suddenly your boss asks you to select a pump for this particular engineering application. So you need to know how to select it. So that is why we do the analysis now. And the analysis, if you can guess it, will be focused on the impeller. We're gonna see how actually the impeller will transfer the energy to the fluid. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to focus on the impeller only and the impeller usually consists of multiple blades right and if you take a look here you have a few blades here one two three four five and six right and to analyze this blade we only need one so that's what we will do but first of all let's take a look at our control volume right so this is our impeller ok 
Okay, and the impeller, the blades looks like this. And if we want to draw our control volume, it should be here. So this will be our inlet. Okay, and this will be our exit. And let's say the impeller is rotating in clockwise direction, right? So the inlet is here. And the outlet is here. Now let's take one blade to analyze, right? Let's say I'm going to take this blade, right? And let me zoom in for that blade, okay? And that blade looks something like this. Okay, I'm going to make it thicker. Alright, so that is your blade, right? And the key to analyzing the blade of an impeller is what we call a velocity triangle. I'm going to show you what a velocity triangle looks like. But before that, let's complete this figure. Okay, and let's say this is the, the curvature of the inlet. Okay. And this is the curvature of the outlet, right? And of course, the blade is rotating clockwise. Okay, so it's rotating in that direction. Okay, so just to recap again, this is the area that I took and I zoom in here. Okay, now let's take a look at the velocity triangle that we talked about before. Let's say that this is the center of rotation. Okay, the center of rotation is here. For example, so this gives me, this is my R1 and this is my R2, okay? And why radius is important? That's because when you want to know the velocity of the blade, right? You simply multiply the omega with the R, right? You multiply the rotational speed with the radius. Then you get the velocity in meter per second. That's why radius is very important, okay? And the flow that goes into the fluid, remember that this is our inlet. This is inlet and this is outlet. Okay, and usually we're going to use inlet is 1 and outlet is condition 2. So the velocity that goes in is here. Okay, that is your velocity and I'm going to call it small v1, right, v1. And the exit will be v2. Okay, this is small v Another velocity component that I have is the speed of the blade, right? And we know that the speed of the blade, u, is equal to omega times r, okay? And where is u in this velocity triangle, right? Of course, velocity will be heading that direction, okay? Uh, I think I'm going to need to erase this first, r1 and r2, okay? And you already know where it is. So, u will actually be going that direction, right? That is your U1, okay? And similarly, U2 will be going to that direction. That is your U2. Now that we have U1 and V1, small V1, we're going to have another velocity component, which is what we call absolute velocity. That is here, okay? And here, I'm going to use capital V1, right? And similarly, here, I'm going to use capital V2. Right, and let me write the V2 outside the triangle so it doesn't confuse you, right? So there you go, that's the velocity triangle. And it's very important for you to draw this velocity triangle from the back of your head, right? You need to be very familiar with velocity triangle if you are to solve the engineering problems related to pumps or turbines. I still remember when I did my PhD, my topic is about turbo machinery. And since day one, my supervisor was hammering me about the importance of velocity triangle. Even to the day when I'm about to sit for the VIVA exam, that is the final exam for PhD, when he tried to prepare me, he still asked me, Hasbullah, can you draw a velocity triangle? So that is how important velocity triangle is, right? So from basic to advanced, from undergrads to PhD, velocity triangle is key to solving the turbo machinery problem. So you must know how to draw velocity triangle. And if I can recap, velocity triangle has three components, okay? First is called the blade speed, which is U, right? So this is called the blade speed. Let me write it here. So U is blade speed. So U is simply omega times R. So whatever your R is. Next component we have is 
small v okay the small v is actually what we call the relative velocity and finally we have the capital v and we call capital v as absolute velocity right and there are a few angles that we can derive from this triangle okay first of all here is called beta right so beta is called relative flow angle or you can call it blade angle okay and the angle between u and capital v is alpha right and alpha is absolute flow angle Okay, and of course, this is beta 1 and alpha 1. And in here is alpha 2 and beta 2. Right, and if I take V1, okay, and I take V1, and I want to resolve this into the components, right? So I draw this line here, okay, that is 90 degrees, right? So this, I can call this V normal 1, right? And this distance is V tangent 1. Right, and I can also do that for exit. Okay, so this is V normal 2, and this distance is V tangent 2. And you will need to use this later. Before we go any further into this velocity triangle, let's take a look at the energy conversion between the fluid and the impeller. Torque of the impeller, right, torque or T is simply the change in in angular momentum okay. so the change of the angular momentum of the fluid inside the impeller between inlet and exit is the torque okay and change in angular momentum if you remember momentum is simply m times velocity right but angular momentum is m dot times the change of radius times the tangential velocity okay and let's take a look here at our velocity triangle so m dot this is m dot times radius times tangential velocity okay so we have r2 so the change here right meaning that this is the change between exit and inlet okay so if i have here r2 then this is going to be VT2, right? VT2 minus R1 times VT1. Okay, so remember it's the change of radius times tangential velocity, and our tangential velocity is VT2 and VT1. And of course, M dot is rho times Q. Okay, Q is the flow rate, and you can so you can also write torque as rho times Q r2 vt2 minus r1 vt1 usually when we talk about pump or turbine we don't talk about the torque okay we talk about the power right and power is simply we use p is equal to torque times omega and omega is the rotational speed right so if i multiply here rho q omega R2 VT2 minus R1 VT1 I'm going to end up with something quite interesting because omega times R right is U okay so omega times R is U so here I'm going to end up with rho Q U2 VT2 minus U1 V one okay now let's take a look at what is vt1 is right so vt1 is actually v1 cos alpha 1 isn't it right because it sits at 90 degree angle right so v1 cos alpha 1 is vt1 so this is v1 cos alpha 1 so similarly vt2 is simply v2 cos alpha 2 right so this will be v2 cos alpha 2 and this equation will become rho q u2 
V2 cos alpha 2 minus U1 V1 cos alpha 1. So let's say that the energy transfer between the pump and fluid is happening at full efficiency, the ideal case. And in that case, the power would equal to rho G Q H T. Okay, and H T, of course, I think you know rho is density, G is the gravity, Q is the flow rate, and H T is what you call the pump head. Okay, and if I can write it here, so H T is pump head. Okay, so this is the theoretical pressure that the pump can get the water from somewhere to somewhere else at higher level, right? So, and if I take, and if I use this equation, HT will become P over rho G Q. Okay, and I already have the equation for power here. Okay, this is P. So, I will end up with rho Q U2 V2 cos alpha 2 minus u1 v1 cos alpha 1 divided by rho g q and quite conveniently rho and q you can cancel this out so you will so you are left with u2 v2 cos alpha 2 minus u1 v1 cos alpha 1 divided by G okay, and this is equal to HT, right? Let me highlight this for you, okay? Okay, guys, so this is the equation for the theoretical pump head, right? So HT equal to U2 V2 cos alpha 2 minus U1 V1 cos alpha 1 divided by G. So make sure that you can derive the equation based on the velocity triangle, right? And find this equation for the theoretical pressure rise. HT. This is important because after this, we're going to be continuing with our derivation and it's going to build on this equation. So this is it for now. Please keep doing it over and over again until you can do it without even looking at this video. Okay guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.